okay so some of the details you know there's something that we call as native valve there's something that we call as prosthetic valve and other type of valves which we are going to discuss whenever we talk in terms of endocarditis now when we talk in terms of native valve endocarditis that is acute native valve endocarditis the common site would be normal or damaged valves if it is subacute it is usually damaged valves when we talk in terms of duration of the disease it is days to weeks in acute and it can be weeks to months which is a relatively more indolent or a prolonged course for subacute subsets when we look at the common organisms causing the same for acute it is staph aureus which is the most common and group b streptococci for subacute it is usually viridan streptococci enterococci coagulase negative staph and gram negative coccobacillus you can get metastatic infections very commonly acute uh, native valve endocarditis whereas it rarely happens with subacute uh, native valve endocarditis now when we talk in terms of a separate category of people that is iv drug abusers tricuspid valve 46 to 78% that is commonly involved involved this is specifically for iv drug abusers or the category referred to as iv du it is a risk factor for recurrent native valve endocarditis staph aureus is seen in more than 50% of infective endocarditis overall in iv drug abusers streptococci streptococci enterococci pseudomonas aeruginosa involving infection of right sided and left sided heart valves both can be seen you can get fungi fungal infections of left sided heart valves and you can get colony bacterial infections lactobacillus infections and non pathogenic miseria species then we talk in terms of a prosthetic valve endocarditis which constitutes about 10 to 30% of all cases of infective endocarditis specifically in developed countries if it is early then the symptoms begin within 60 days of the valve surgery and it is mostly due to a complication most common organism is involved is coagulase negative staph if it is late then onset is thereafter usually from a later infection most likely to it is a community acquired infection and the most common organism in this case would be streptococcal infection what about healthcare associated endocarditis can be seen it is nosocomial you can get a community spread after a recent hospitalization or there is a long term inbreeding device in the form of dialysis cannulas or in the form of long term central lines which can lead to development of vegetations the common risk factors include structural heart disease such as rheumatic congenital or aging disease you can get prosthetic heart valves injected drug use or drug abuse either way you can call it patients who have undergone invasive procedures such as intracardiac pacemakers icds av fistulas indwelling vascular devices any other infection with a systemic bacteremia such as an underlying pneumonia or a meningitis patients who are immunocompromised and patients who have had a prior history of infective endocarditis what about iv drug abusers it accounts for 25% of cases of infective endocarditis in us and uh, Uh, in india a lot of these cases are reported from punjab 5 is to 1 is the male to female ratio it is very uncommon for these subsets to have a pre existing valvular disease it's got a variable microbiology and mortality is less than 10% so what are the common features for infective endocarditis patient will present to you with fever cough dyspnea or chest pain which is more common with iv drug abuse new onset cardiac murmurs on clinical examination you can get petechiae on conjunctiva buccal and palatal mucosa and extremities you can get splinter or subcutaneous hernias more commonly visible in male but you can get something called as osseous nodes which are small tender subcutaneous nodules specifically in pulp of digits you can get genoval lesions which are erythematous or hemorrhagic non tender macular lesions on palms and soles you can get embolic digital infarcts you can get raw spots which are oval retinal hemorrhages then you can get other manifestations such as splenic abscess a mycotic aneurysm which is most commonly associated with cerebral artery territory and anticoagulation has to be avoided in the scene you get musculoskeletal manifestations in the form of arthralgia myalgia arthritis you can get renal manifestations in the form of immune complex glomerulonephritis or embolic infarcts you can get congestive cardiac failure systemic emboli in the form of strokes intracerebral bleeds brain abscesses or meningitis 
what about fever you know fever is the most common symptom and sign in patient with infective hepatitis but it can be absent or it may have a very minimal spike in those patients who are elderly in those patients who already present to you with an onset of congestive cardiac failure patients who have severe debility patients who have chronic renal failure or a native valve endocarditis which is caused by a coagulase negative staphylococci what about cardiac murmurs a new onset changing recurgent murmur is actually the hallmark of infective endocarditis and they are commonly not audible in those patients who have a tricuspid valve infective endocarditis or patients who have an acute native valve endocarditis due to staph aureus now please understand that murmurs are initially heard only in 30 to 45% of patients but eventually 75 to 85% of these patients would develop murmurs some more neuro manifestations intracranial hemorrhages i discussed before even subarachnoid hemorrhages cerebral embolic episodes septic mycotic aneurysms then you can get infections in the brain in the form of brain abscess meningoencephalitis ventriculitis and ependymitis you can get encephalopathy in these patients which can be infectious it can be either toxic or metabolic you can get a big spectrum from neuropsychiatric disorders seizures venial nerve palsy headache peripheral neuropathies and myalgias even spine and spinal cord can be involved in the form of pain dysitis osteomyelitis radiculitis and spinal cord infarctions so where do these vegetations happen they happen mainly on valve closure lines it involves destruction and perforation of valve leaflets you can get associated rupture of cauda tendine interventricular septum and papillary muscles you can get valve ring abscesses you can get myocardial abscesses and you can get conduction abnormalities in these particular patients so this is this is this is how splinter hemorrhages look on clinical examination they are non specific they are non blanching basically lydia reddish brown lesions which are found under the nail bed and usually do not extend along the entire length of the nail these are osseous nodes which are more specific for infective endocarditis painful and erythematous nodules it are located on the pulp of the fingers and toes and it is more as commonly associated with subacute infective endocarditis what about genital lesions it's more specific erythematous blanching macules non painful it is mainly located on palms and soles now these are septic emboli with hemorrhage and infarction due to acute staph aureus endocarditis these are rod spots which are seen in the retina which is also seen in severe anemia what about the rest of the workup you would require a complete hemogram you would require a crp you would get a esr 